This is a B&K 650 tube tester. I bought it on eBay and I haven't opened it, but I'm going to see if we can fix it, put it back in a reasonable operating condition. It looks like that someone may have opened this at some time in the past, maybe even the person I bought it from on eBay, because some of the screws are backed out a little bit. So I don't know what we're going to find when we get underneath, but let's see. And the next thing is we're going to open up this side, which is called the main panel, and lay it over on top of this side. I'm going to put a towel in there just to protect everything. Okay, this is the interior. Looks like the 83 tube is there. Can't tell whether any of the uh, capacitors have been replaced, but it doesn't look like too many have. And uh, there is the the second tube, this uh, tester has two tubes. I'll show you a schematic here in a little bit. And this is a tester actually that goes back into the 1950s. In fact, this tester was one of the first tube testers I ever saw. I think the TV serviceman that came out to fix our set, the first time I ever remember had one of these kinds of tube testers. At any rate, they were pretty popular in the 1950s because you could test a lot of stuff very fast and it was a mutual conductance tester. Okay, so let's take a look at the schematic. Here is the schematic. And rather than go through each of the sections at this point, I think what I'm going to do is just go over the general method I'm going to use. I'm trying to determine whether this tester is worth fixing. To do that, I'm going to try to find out if each of these windings on the transformer are good. I'm going to try to find out whether the meter is good. I'm going to test these two tubes to see if they're good. And I'm going to generally look for anything in the circuit that might be hard to replace. Now the two hardest to replace items usually are the transformer and the meter. Fortunately I have another B&K 650 that has a, a good meter. I know it's a good meter. But I'm not sure if it has a good transformer. So I'm hoping that between this set and that set I'll be able to get a good transformer and a good meter, hopefully a good 83 and a good 6AT6. So the first thing I'm going to check are the windings of these transform of this transformer. And for that, I'm just going to use an ordinary multimeter. The meter I'm going to use while checking this unit out is this uh, Radio Shack. 18 range analog multimeter. I have a lot of meters. I collect test equipment. But this is actually my favorite. The reason is that it's so small, but it's also a 20,000 ohms per volt meter, which is very, very sensitive or at least I should say, as sensitive as you need for most of this old tube equipment. If I need anything more than this, I'll use either a vacuum tube voltmeter or a modern digital multimeter, both of which have much higher input impedance than even this meter. But the first thing you want to do before you start probing around in any instrument that has a meter is to disconnect the meter movement and short it. The reason is, if you put an ohm meter across those terminals and you have a very sensitive meter, like a 50 microamp or so, you'll probably burn out the meter movement. And then you'll wonder why the thing never works. 
It may have worked before you put the probes on it, but it probably won't afterwards. So first thing, take it off, short the meter, and remove the leads from the circuit before you start probing or turning on power or anything, because this is one of the hardest pieces of equipment to replace uh, in this old antique tube tester. Okay, now I'm going to put that shorting lead across the meter so there's no chance that I can put any current of any size through the meter. By the way, you may not realize that if you ever see a shorting bar across a meter like that that looks like it's factory installed, a piece of brass or copper, it's probably put there deliberately. It's actually the meter shunt. The reason is that these meters draw very, very little current, and all they need is a very, very low resistance shunt, and sometimes that's just a piece of metal. So don't be fooled and think that somebody has accidentally left something in that shouldn't be there. Don't remove that shunt. If you do, you'll probably burn out the meter. <laughs> 